This example is one of the simplest examples you can take to practice how to calculate the electric flux through a closed surface. So the closed surface we're talking about in this case is a cube. And remember, this cube does not exist. It's completely a fictional surface that you put in space to calculate the total electric flux through it. It doesn't exist in reality. It's not made of any material. There's no charge here at all. It's a region of empty space. And it just happens in this problem that there's an electric field given to be in the I direction. Now, where is this electric field coming from? We don't care. Doesn't matter for us in the problem. It, the only thing is that we know that there exists an electric field that's in the I direction and it's uniform. Where this electric field comes from is not an issue that we want to deal with right now. It could be, there could be charges somewhere else, like a sheet of charge somewhere else. It doesn't matter. All we care about is that there's a region of empty space here and there's an electric field in this region of empty space and it's uniform, it points in the X direction and we put a mathematical surface that's in the shape of a closed cube. So if you want to get integration of E dot dA through this closed cube and we put this, remember the circle means that we're talking about a closed surface, how do you do that? Well first let's name the surfaces. The left surface we'll call it surface number one, the, surf the right surface we'll call it surface number two, the top surface, we'll call it surface number three. Surface number four is the bottom surface. Surface number five is the front surface facing us. And surface number six is the back surface. So there are six surfaces. So if you want to get the electric flux through this closed surface, you have to get the electric flux through all the six surfaces. And actually rewrite this integration over the closed surface and rewrite it as integration of E dot dA through surface number one plus integration of E dot dA through surface number two, plus surface number three, plus four, plus five, plus six. So you have actually six integrations that you need to do to calculate the electric flux through this closed surface. And you have to use the notation that the area vector points from inside to outside for each one of these integrations. So let's start with surface number one we want to get integration of E dot dA through surface number one, the left surface. We know the electric field because it's given in the problem. It's given to be E in the I direction. But what about the element of area dA? Let's draw an element of area for the left surface. And now what is the direction of this element of area? How can we write dA as a vector? Clearly, if you want to use Gauss's law, we said that for a closed surface, the area vector has to point from inside to outside. So we have to take the area vector to point to the left. And if you want to write the area vector then as a vector, we can write it as dA magnitude times minus i hat, because this minus i hat gives you the direction that points to the left. So now we're ready to put these two things together and write the integration as integration of EI dotted into dA in the minus i hat direction i hat dot i hat is 1 and the minus sign comes out and you're left with integration of e dA. So you want to integrate e d across this area. Now in this particular problem, the electric field is constant. So I can take it outside of the integration. So you get minus e integration of dA. What's this integration over? It's over surface number 1, the left surface. So let's say the area of surface number 1 is just and so then we can just write minus E times A, where A is the surface area of one of these surface areas of the cube. So this is the electric flux through the left surface. And it makes sense, the negative sign, why? Because remember we said whenever the electric field line goes into a closed surface, the contribution to the flux will be negative because the angle between the area and electric field vector here is bigger than 90 degrees. It's actually 180 degrees. That's where this minus sign is coming from. Okay, let's look at surface number two. Surface number two is the right surface. And we want, the electric field is known. It's E in the I direction for any surface. It's a uniform electric field. But the area vector, how would we write the area vector for this right surface? Obviously, since the surface is a closed surface, the area vector has to point from inside to outside. So that means it has to point to the right. Now, how can I write the area vector to be pointing in the right direction? then I can write it as magnitude of the area times plus i hat. If you put these two things together, you get ei dotted into dA plus i hat.
times plus i hat now i hat dot i hat is one you get just plus integration of eda the same idea if you want to integrate e over this surface e is just a constant so i can take it outside you get plus e integration of da and what's the integration of da it's the area of this right surface which is the same as the area of the left surface so it's just a so the electric flux through the right surface turns out to be plus e times a it's equal and opposite in sign to this flux through the left surface and we we agree that it's positive we expect that it's positive because the right surface is the surface that the electric field line is going out of and we said whenever the electric field goes out of a surface the contribution to the flux is going to be positive in this case the angle is exactly zero so cosine zero is one so you get a positive number okay what about surface number three the top surface how would you write down the area vector for surface number three since the area vector has to point from inside to outside then it has to be in the plus j direction now you get ei dotted into da j what's i dot j zero so you get zero and so you see the angle between the electric field and area vector is zero is 90 degrees and so the contribution to the flux will be zero there's no electric flux through the top surface what about for the bottom surface what will the area vector be for the bottom surface well the area vector has to point from inside to outside so it has to point downwards so it has to be in the minus j hat direction put those two things together you get ei dotted into da minus j hat now what's i hat dot j hat zero again the angle is 90 degrees between the area and the electric field vector so you get zero electric flux through the bottom surface what about for surface number five the front surface what direction would the area vector be for this front surface well the area vector has to point from inside to outside so it has to point perpendicular to the surface and from inside to outside which means it has to be in the z direction so it's in the plus k hat direction if you put this back into the equation you get ei dotted into da k hat now what's i hat dotted into k hat zero the angle is 90 degrees so you get zero and if you think about this again in the number of field lines there are no field lines going through this element this surface because the the angle the the the, the, the field lines are actually going parallel to the surface they're not going through the surface so you expect that the flux should be zero anyway what about surface number six surface number six is the back surface so what would the direction of the area vector be for the back surface it should be pointing from inside to outside in this case then it'll be pointing in the minus k hat direction put this back into the equation you get e i i hat dotted into da in the minus k hat direction i hat dot k hat is zero so you get again zero flux so that means that for the top surface the bottom surface and the back surface and the front surface there is actually zero electric flux and again the reason that the intuitive reason is that there's no electric field lines going through those surfaces the electric field lines are going parallel to the surface but it's not going through the surface so the electric flux is zero mathematically because the angle is 90 degrees when the angle is 90 degrees then the dot product gives you zero and you get zero so these four terms actually are just zero and we showed that the electric flux through the left surface is minus e times a and the electric flux through the right surface is plus e times a and so when you add these two you get zero and so the total electric flux through this cube turns out to be exactly zero